Every hood and corner, every son and daughter Yeah, we gonna reach number one and they can't stop us And I think they can't take us But why haven't you? I mean, because you're very good at what you do. I can't just pick up and go work somewhere. You know, there's there's legalities and things like that. You need work permits. Everything happens in its own time. Like I, I, it's it's very refreshing to hear somebody who's not from where I'm from say, you know, your work is very good. You're kind of show my work and not talk about them because I'm not a makeup artist, I'm not a hairstylist. I know a little bit of fashion, but I'm not a fashion stylist. And so, you know, I tell people, you know, there's a saying where where the whole is where some of the parts, something like that. Some smart person said it a long time ago. But I believe that, you know, my work is a reflection of the people who work around me. And so I believe in, in embracing other other talent, other people who are in the industry and kind of promote them at the same time because you know when I'm when I become when I get to the point where I'm you know super successful I you know you can't get the people that help you along the way people like the makeup artists that I work with the hairstylists the fashion stylists people like Omar who, who from John said you know who I want to see somebody who's trying to hang up their dog who who can it be even that even that is you know seeing something beyond yourself or something bigger than you or 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 something different than so people help me and I try to help other people. Okay, now I'm coming to you because your name was mentioned and again I'm so in awe to see that not only do we have you here on the staff of the Art Institute, but we have so many Bahamian people who are coming up who are no longer ashamed to be in the world of fashion, no longer ashamed to be pushing careers full throttle into photography once upon a time. 
you know, we grew up, we had to be a teacher, a doctor, a taxi cab driver, or work in the hotel. Um, you being, of course, in the Art Institute, which is, I guess, non-traditional when you think about some of what we were, we were told to pursue as children, what can you say you notice about the evolution of educating the modern Bahamian child as it relates to some of these careers that we are now embracing? And, you know, you see them excelling, you, like Sherrod and all the others. Um, one of the main things that I know is uh, in the Bahamas, well, we are a nation that are uh, blessed with talented individuals. Me, myself, growing up, growing up um, in the Bahamas, especially growing up in West Street, I noticed that you find a lot of diverse individuals, and we do not capitalize on diversity as much as we should back home. Um, back in the 90s, a lot of folks were encouraging you, if you go to school, you have to either be a doctor, a lawyer, something in business. When I first was introduced to SCAD, um, it opened my eyes as a creative individual. It opened my eyes even more how much I can do as an artist. Um, I started off as a painting major then went and was involved in so many other things when I came to SCAD. And then when I went from SCAD, I went to Art Institute as a teacher. And I always wanted to teach because one of the key things that I love about teaching, what I love about the Art Institute, they introduced me and pushed me to whatever I was interested in in expanding the minds of my students. Now we do have a, a large, a good community of um, Bahamian students that actually attend the Art Institute. We have tons of students who are in, um, in the culinary program, also students who are in video, uh, visual effect. We also have students who are in graphic design. We have the Powell sisters, extremely talented individuals too. They're extremely talented into, um, in graphic design. But one of the things that I notice about how we as a nation um, need to expand is in creativity. We have too many talented individuals, but we, some people are afraid, they used to be afraid to expand on this talent and pursue this career as an artist. But now you find that like near like 2000, I noticed a change in like 2003. There was like a big change of the government investing more money into the creative aspects of things. Um, the Sprinkle Art Workshop used to be the first major thing that used to be uh, to get uh, a lot of different students involved with the, the arts. And then normally when the National Arts Center was built, they started expanding, the expanding um, diversity and getting more classes, more different things. So, so Sherrod was a guest speaker. That's when they first incorporate, incorporated um, photography mm -hmm. into their program. So I noticed that they started doing things like that. And in the Bahamas, a lot of people knew me, but then a lot of people didn't know me. So uh, normally I'll come like every year or two or three years, I'll pop out of nowhere, enter a show or do something like that. But it's not just the fact that I'm showing, to show people that there's, there's still diversity, there's still creative individuals out there making career, making a living, and there's something that they love and have a passion for, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you mentioned this renaissance of sorts mm -hmm. when it comes to arts and all the rest of that. What do you think we are lacking as it relates to supporting people to getting them to the next level? Because obviously Sherrod has a self-passion mm -hmm. for himself, which I guess is what pushed you to get to where you are. And um, you know, you mentioned Ashley and her sister, who are the Powell sisters. Mm -hmm. And you know, you see they obviously have parents who are, okay, you wanna do art, fine. But again, we still have the majority of Bahamians who are along the lines of, the parents I had once upon a time, you're never going to make money in writing. My dad has the biggest archive. He has a bigger archive than I do of my own writings. But basically, what do you attribute this renaissance that we're going through, where we now have the film movement, we now have the photographers, we now have the writers and the singers and everybody coming out in droves? What do you attribute to, um, all that to? I think, I think people are not being afraid to take chances. You know, one, one thing I notice um, being on that recently a lot of people are not afraid of taking chances and being independent. And you know, we come from a nation of great individuals that believe in pushing themselves. You found that a lot of independent companies started from ground up. And now I feel like a lot of kids are saying that there's so much to, to the arts than just drawing and painting. You know, you can do visual effect, you can do graphic design, you can do painting, I mean not painting, you can do video, you can do uh, visual effect. These things, um, interior design, you know, just not the common things that we were trained or was aware that you can't or cannot do as an artist. 
So one of the things that I feel that people are doing are doing now is just not being afraid. People are just taking chances. The thing that I feel that we should also incorporate more in our system is that more classes, more diverse classes, to show kids that guess what? There are so many different things in the arts that you can't do, that you can do, and how to push yourself. Like they need to get more um, people in from like different behemoths who are qualified in these areas and teach. Because people only think art is just drawing, painting, maybe uh, sculpture. That's it, because those were the typical artists that we grew up with, Antonio Roberts, Maxwell Taylor, um, Eddie Minutes, and stuff like that, uh, uh, Brett, Brett, uh, Brett Malone, were all the common, common artists that we were familiar with, so we were only um, familiar with the traditional aspect of things. But kids nowadays are pushing. Now you have people listening to pop music. Remember, in my era, I remember Joy Ride was the number one song. <laughs> if he wasn't playing reggae at a, at a party, he wasn't saying nothing. Nowadays, I noticed that even people are more open towards Bohemian music. You remember when um, Party in the Backyard first came out, everyone was pushing Bohemian music, and I thought that was a totally big change, that before, you may hear one or two Bohemian songs at a, at a party. Now you're in like a whole line of Bohemian music, and even more people are not being afraid to take chances and push it. And, and you find that people are supporting it if you just put it out there. You know, I think the new, the new generation of, of, of people are being, of kids and, and individuals are being more diverse and not being afraid to challenge themselves and push themselves. It's just that the only thing that's lacking is the support. And the support is building based on the fact that we were trained that other areas make more money and easier way to make an income than others. But I feel like if we have a better support system, it could change the opinions and views of, like you saying you were a writer, and your dad have an archive when you're writing, show that there are a lot of competition, international competition, and different things that we should involve. Like I was first introduced to art by my art teacher. And, and I changed my whole world about, about art, so. And um, now while we have the mic, just for verification, what exactly is your discipline that you teach here at the Art Institute? Wow. Um, <laughs> I teach so many different areas. I was blessed to, like I said to you earlier, a double major in, in undergrad and grad school. And it allowed me, as a teacher, to teach different areas in Art Institute. I started off as a foundation professor. I, teach, I taught at first um, drawing one, drawing two, 2D, and then some of the professors knew me from working in other areas in LA. I would like for you to teach a photo class. Then I started teaching a digital asset management class, which is called the Down class. So um, I was blessed enough to my um, colleagues and my um, bosses were, were, were gave me an opportunity to actually teach so many different areas and push myself and use all of my talents. So I teach photography. I teach also in the illustration department. I teach also in the foundation department. And I also teach, I'm getting ready now to start teaching in the graphic design department. So I utilize everything that I do as an artist because I freelance and do a lot of work here in Atlanta. So I do graphic design, I do painting, I mean, uh, fine art, and I also do commercial work. So all of these things that I do in the industry as a freelancer, I'm doing as a teacher myself, as a professor. I love it. Now that we're on the topic of teaching, I know that you do a lot of workshops back home. What was the difference that you would say about presenting to this American college audience as opposed to the audience that you normally have back home in the workshops that you do? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> well, I usually, when I do speaking engagements or workshops, it's, it's usually students who are generally interested in art. They're not just disciplined in just one type of art, like photography, per se. And so even even before I got here, I said, you know, do I do I change up the way that I speak? Do I show different work? How I just I pretty much approach it the same way I would approach the the workshops that I did in the past back at home. And um, I knew that people would would the the thing for me would, was would they gravitate to my work? Would they would they react the same way to my work as as local people where I'm from? How the way they react to my work? And pretty much, it's been you know they laughed at my corny jokes when I said silly things, and their eyes opened when I showed certain images, and 
you know so it was it was it's kind of the same art that, that's why I love being artistic and being creative because art is a universal language and it doesn't matter who the person is what culture what language they speak what color their skin is if they if they feel moved by something that they see because I'm a visual artist that the reaction is going to be the same no matter where I am or what part of the globe I mean it was just different for me to be able to expand outside of the country and there you have it this is Arthea with Rise with Thea brought to you by DIRadioCast.com thank you so much Sherrod Lightborn fashion photographer extraordinaire and all the rest of those wonderful great photography skills he applies and also a special thank you to Mr. Omar Richardson our Bahamian on staff here at the Art Institute of Atlanta Indicator every hood and corner every son and daughter yeah we gonna reach number one and they can't stop us none of them can't tame us they can't change us if they come in my lane well then it's gonna get dangerous